Sup nerds, I'm Wes. I'm Tom. And I'm Aaron. We're Neverboard Gaming, and today we're trying to kill the princesses and steal the tridents and crush the kingdoms and just do all kinds of evil stuff in Villainous. <laughs> Villainous is an asymmetrical race to finish your objective. Uh, every character has a slightly different objective, which takes different steps to actually uh, obtain. For Captain Hook, you're, you're trying to defeat P Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger. So you, to get that, you actually need somebody to put Peter Pan in play, and you need to like get him over to the Jolly Roger and then have a fight with him. Like there's so there's a lot of steps that go into that, and it's it may seem like oh it's easy, but there's like a lot to it. So every place you're going to, uh, each of the locations on your board has different abilities, different things you can do. Uh, players, uh, the other players can play uh, these fate cards, I think they're called, onto your board, and they have different effects, and they remove some of the abilities that you have at that location. Um, the thing I think of this when, when when I first broke this out, you you say it. <laughs> what? I was just looking. I was just uh, looking because uh, there was a. So when we first broke what this out, what is going on? I don't know. <laughs> well, what did you think? Was it scythe? scythe? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. So it feels like scythe light in a way, like yeah. it just, scythe light light scythe, scythe light light. So it's not as light as my little scythe, but 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 just the the way you know you're choosing what you're doing with. Oh. Aaron's on so many drugs because <laughs> uh, you have your. They're not called meeples. They're not called busts. They're some sort of like character mover. Animation. They're called a, a uh, character mover. mover. Character so you're, mover. you're moving from location to location, and that's how you take the actions. Just like in Scythe, you're, you're going to be moving. Yeah. You can't take the same action twice. Mm -hmm. Now in Scythe, there is a character who can do that, and actually, I haven't seen that here yet. But there's an expansion that's going to come out, so maybe that'll be a thing. Um, and I really do like, like Aaron said, the fact that your abilities are just these symbols, and you, after a while, you get you figure out the symbols pretty easily yeah, and it's a good way to mix things up without there being a lot of text on the board mm -hmm. um but the way that you play cards to nullify only half that section like i i can still go there and sometimes i have to go there to fight the thing mm -hmm. but i can still go there but i'm getting a, a smaller portion of that action list and i think that's a very clever w that's a clever way to do that it's very mm -hmm. like efficient you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the coolest things this game has going for it besides the fact that it's disney villain so you slap disney on it it's going to sell out is just the fact that because of the asymmetry it really is almost a different game depending on whose character you're playing because like Aaron said, with Peter, with Captain Hook, you're trying to kill Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger. With Ursula, you're trying to like steal a trident, so you need the King Triton guy to come out and then have his trident and fight him. But even the way that like, uh, who was it that has the curses? Uh, uh, Maleficent has the curses coming out, and when we play characters, they nullify her curses. So like, her objective seems easier having a curse at every location, but it's also easier for us to negate her objective. So there's really that balance of, I, I'm not going to say that some characters are just like easier to win with, but there's definitely characters that like their objectives are easier to grasp what you're trying to do and how to go about doing it. Yeah, like Prince John, all he's doing is trying to collect power. Mm -hmm. But then there's a card that Ursula has that she can play if somebody has as a, like six or seven power. Yeah. Like So what, if you're playing, if you know at the table somebody's playing with Prince John, he's collecting a lot of, of this power other players won't be as worried about stocking up on power because Prince John is going to be the target if Ursula is like, okay, I'm stealing one of your power. Like, you right, have right. to take it from Prince John because he wins from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are the different mashups. They they, they go together in, in, in wonky ways yeah. Yeah. like that. Like, you know, without an Ursula, it's a little bit harder to target Prince John. You know what I mean? You have to specifically go to his deck, but Ursula has stuff in her own deck. And that is... One little complaint I do have is with all these differences, and you need a lot of steps to do it. I need this, this, and this to mm. all line up. Those are just cards in your deck. So it can be a, a little bit of luck of just, oh, I happened to draw all the cards. All the pieces I need were, mm -hmm. came up pretty early. So I'm on the move. And you know, again, people can still try and stop me, but I'm on the move to complete my thing earlier because mm -hmm. the card that I needed just happened to not be at the bottom of my deck. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing is that it also kind of makes the game a little bit long. Because now we're incentivized to dig through the whole deck a whole bunch, so the de game can can take again if 
luck of the draw is not on your side, the game can take a little while of just digging through and trying to find the pieces. Yeah, and with like your personal decks, like you have a hand, so you can kind of try to get your hand where you want to be for that step. But when you're going to draw other people's fate cards to play against them, like it's unique that every character has their own fate deck. So if I want to do something against Aaron, I go to his deck to do it against him so mm -hmm. that it's specifically targeted against that character, but it also means I can't like build up cards against people really well and then like plan out, oh, they did this, now I've been saving this card to do this against them. Like there's a little bit of that in your personal deck, but if the fate deck's against them, you're really limited to what you draw at the top. So if you're like, okay, he's doing that, I really want to get this out there, and oh, that's not what I needed to stop him. And granted, you do draw two and keep one, but still, neither but of these is what I wanted. It does kind of feel like when we, back in the day when we were playing Munchkin, mm -hmm. where like one player starts to lead and everybody's doing everything they can to attack that one player. Like, yeah. okay, we're all gonna, you know, take our fate actions, you know, if your board has it, like if it hasn't been covered up, like we need to do something to stop him. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna discard all of my cards so I draw new cards at the end of the, uh, end of the round so that I have fresh cards when I try to do something to him next. Mm -hmm. Granted, there is a little bit of the think this this little token to slow down the, the ganging up yeah. on everybody of like okay once you get attacked you get this token so you can't be attacked again yeah. but okay so now i'm going to attack somebody and give this to them and then they attack me right back like yeah that was a good idea but it was a it, it's trying it's putting a band-aid on a problem that's still relatively prevalent in the game that there's an awful lot of take that mm -hmm. and just you know ganging up on people like but it's still fun sometimes no no it's not I mean, great. It's not my. I don't love that in games per se, and it's not a horrible. Like that was a, a relatively decent implementation, mm -hmm. but it was like at least acknowledging, hey, there. This aspect is a part of the game, so we're gonna put a, you know, again, put a bandaid on it. We're gonna fix it a little bit, but it's still, still relatively prevalent. And it is definitely going to be a take that game. I mean, you are playing as the villains, as the antagonist in Disney movies. So I think they designed it to be a take that game. Mm -hmm. But if that really salty gameplay isn't your style, then this is going to be one that even if like, I love Disney, but you want to play friendly, like this isn't that. This is for the people who like Disney villains, who want, like, villain. who want to do the bad stuff, who want to fight with each other. Like That's who this game is targeting. This game is a lot of fun. The print quality and everything's great. These little movers are, they're really cool. Like, Awesome little thing. The only complaint about quality I have is this little cauldron. It's a little flimsy, but overall, it's well. And they didn't like have to include yeah, a cauldron. It, yeah. Like it's nice that it's there, but it's not. What if you flipped it over and poured resin in the bottom <laughs> oh, and then thick it? Use it as a mold. Just to thick it. Just to thick it. To thick it. That's yeah. that's what they say. To thick it. Thick it up. It's definitely one of those games that every game group's gonna have, and everybody's gonna play at least once, and maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, but it's. It's a fun little take that kind of game. Looking at the target audience for this game, I do think they did a good job creating a game that's not overly complicated. It's maybe like one step above where I thought it should be since it is like mm -hmm. a target shelves game with people who love Disney are going to go for it and almost be a little like overwhelmed because it's, it's more than your typical casual like, oh, I have so many games. I've got almost every expansion for Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Like, that's kind of where I feel like the target was for this game. And it's definitely a notch above that, which is good in that if they get it and they really grasp it, it's helping pull those people deeper into the hobby, mm -hmm. which is just better for everyone. But it could also be they buy it and they're like, this is way more than I asked for. And then it pushes them away. So, like, maybe it's going to be great for those people, maybe not. I personally, I did have fun with it. I really like Salty Take That Games. I agree with Tom, it was a little bit long because of how much you were just trying to dig into the decks. But overall, I had fun with it. I probably enjoyed this game the least out of the three of us. Now, granted, I still, it was a fun time. I will play it again, but I have a really big caveat of, I feel like it's like three or four players, kind of like four players max, because it, it there is not a lot to do on other people's turns, so mm -hmm. a decent amount of downtime, and the game can go really long because we're just digging through these decks, and there can be a lot of take that. Now, granted, take that is better with more players because more salt is getting passed around the table, so you don't feel like people are ganging up on you as much, 
but this is just not the type of game where I want to invest a two and a half to three hours no. of just constantly, well, F you, well, screw you, well, you suck, well, I hate you. That being said, I am very glad this game exists because it is so complex on the target shelves. I, I agree with Wes that it's possible that some people pick it up and then go, oh, this is too much, and then back away. But I believe it'd probably be more often the case that people pick it up and say, okay, this is actually pretty dang dope. You know, what other games are like this? Um, the prop, these things aren't stackable as well as I wanted them to be, so <laughs> yes. that's an issue. No, I really like the, the component quality, like Aaron said. I really like the Scythe board, and especially I like that connection to Scythe. So anybody, again, somebody picks it up off the target shelf, says, ooh, this game is a lot like what you say, Scythe, and then they go and get Scythe, and then they just jump right into the deep end. Or maybe they'll, jump, they'll grab my little Scythe and jump into the shallow end and hurt their ankles. This pool metaphor is stupid. Why don't oh. you dive on into the comments and leave us a comment? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you splash around in the subscribe button? <laughs> and well, you, you belly flop into the description to click the... This isn't working. <laughs> Just click pool the link, metaphors. buy the game if you want it. We own pools. And the expansion. When the expansion's available, we'll probably forget to go back and add this link. If you're watching this, the expansion's available. There's not a link to the expansion. Let us know. We'll add one for you. Oh man, that's only going to be relevant to one person. <laughs> <laughs> the one person who also subscribes to our channel, so they'll never be bored. Boom. <laughs> I need a mustache. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> should I get... Oh man, if we thought ahead, I gotta yeah. cut out a Darkest Timeline goatee and stick it oh. on. <laughs> Evil Troy and Evil Abed.